glory to glory into the image of God just by the Spirit. Praise God. So I see your life. I see your destiny. I see your career and business in this season turning around from glory to glory, from one dimension of increase, of manifestation of abundance to another level in the name of Jesus Christ. I see your new, your new man being transformed and renewed and recharged that you will be freshly anointed from one dimension of anointing and power and revelation to another in the name of Jesus Christ. I see your ability and capacity to hear and to receive the word of God changed and elevated from one level Level to the next level in the name of Jesus Christ you will hear clearer and you will hear louder you will hear with great precision and accuracy the word will not be unto you in Proverbs but in a decoded form that you will understand in the name of Jesus Christ I see your eyes being opened and illuminated you will see far you will see beyond your time in the name of Jesus Christ, you will see beyond your mountains. You will see beyond your valleys because God has set you above all in the name of Jesus Christ. And he said, he that is above is above all. You are above only and you are the head and not the tail. Therefore, the word of God that is locating you this morning is bringing a transformation to your ability to see spiritually and physically, to your ability to hear, that you will not just be hearing through your senses, but you will be hearing through the voice of God because the voice of God, the will of God, is the power of God that will propel you to your god ordained destiny. In this time, you will not be limited by time. You will not be limited by geography. You will not be limited by circumstances because you can do all things through Christ that is is walking in you and in you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your heart, your mind will comprehend the unusual in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, receive that grace this morning in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. So, this morning we will continue the series which we have started for this month, which I titled The Power of Transformation. Praise God. The Power of Transformation. This is part two. Last Sunday, we did the land, the intro and the landing. What is transformation? Is a change in appearance. Praise God. Is an outward and inward change. And is a change that brings a change in course. In other words, in direction. It must bring not just an outward appearance, but it will cause you to change the route you have been taking. And it will change your level. Praise God. Praise Jesus. So it's a comprehensive spiritual change. And then we looked at the things that are involved. There are boundaries upon which changes occur. Changes must occur within the God-ordained principles and laws. Praise God. So it is orchestrated by God within the boundaries of his laws. Praise Jesus. When you follow this, these laws are not to limit you, but the laws the Lord had made to protect you to preserve you and to ensure that you follow the right path. And when you follow the right path, you will arrive at the appointed destiny and on time in the name of Jesus Christ. This, hallelujah. But this morning, the part two we'll be looking at is the renew, what I titled the renewing of the mind. Renewing the mind. So today we'll be looking at the mind and the importance and the process of renewing or changing the mind. Praise God. You need the mind to be renewed for the change or transformation in your life in the right direction to happen. In the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5, First Thessalonians chapter 5, I'm going to read it in two translations. In New King James Version, it says, First Thessalonians 5.23, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ may the god of peace himself sanctify you how completely that's my prayer for someone on this altar this morning
He said, and may your whole, not some part, but your whole spirit, your whole soul, and your whole body be preserved, blameless, incorruptible, limitlessness, without limitation, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, at the time of your breakthrough, in the name of Jesus Christ. Then look at that same scripture in the amplified version of the Bible. It says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. That is, separate you from profane and vulgar things. Make you pure and whole and undamaged, consecrated to him, set apart for his purpose. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept complete and be found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. We speak about the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they are one. The body, you as a person in the image of God, is also a tripartite being but you are not separated praise god the same way you are three in one you are never separated the same way god is three in one and not individual entities praise god look at it and there it made us understand what are the three components of you and that is the spirit man the soulish man and the body which is the physical body praise god so you have to understand the many one, number one, the spirit. So you are the spirit man first and every other thing follows. Praise God. And today we'll be looking at that one dimension. The physical body is the body. That's what you are seeing. The one standing before you now speaking. But there are two invisible parts of you, which is your spirit man and your soul. The spirit man is the one that is regenerated, is the one that was born anew the day you give your life to Christ Jesus. Praise God. Now you have the other part of you, which is also unseen, which is the soul. Now the soul is like the engine room consisting of two, three components, which is the will, the ability to do. Number two component of that soul is the mind. The mind is the center or the seat of thoughts and reasoning. Praise God. And then you have the third part in the soulish realm, which is your emotion, where you feel. Praise God. It's here you feel. This is where your mood are determined and fled up the engine room for moves is in the emotion part of the mind so now you find out that the mind as an entity or as part of you occupies the central or the most a great important part in your daily activities praise god how now i want you to understand this that when God created you in this tripartite function or nature or entity, he had one thing in mind. He says, be fruitful, multiply, increase and replenish the earth. They subdue the earth. And what do you do? Have dominion. So God created you from the beginning with these components to be outstanding, to be on top, to be in command. So know this, it has not changed. Wherever or however you are, that same unction, that same enablement, that same capability is still in you and at work in you. Praise God. But it's, it needs one to be activated. And after being activated, to be recharged. In other words, to be kept going day by day. The same way you have your phone or any electronic gadget, you charge it by use. The power keeps getting lower. The percentage keeps getting lower. If you feel that the power can go on forever, 
if he's keep de depleting and the percentage warning you the usage is de is increasing and what you have remaining the power you have remaining to go ahead is diminishing is depleting if you don't replenish or recharge to a next capacity to full capacity with time the whole thing will be dead praise god but guess what that's the same way the body the mind the spirit needs to be daily recharged in order to keep abreast with the daily activities praise god so one have this in mind that god has made you to be outstanding and you are designed for exploits praise god now if transformation is change change requires you to walk in the miraculous is change that enables you to manifest the miraculous praise god and there is no growth in life nor is there any change in life without the renewing of the mind praise god is the renewing of the mind that triggers change every issue every time the mind is recharged every time the mind is transformed is elevated change comes to the entirety of the body praise god in other words it brings change in the body it brings change in the spirit it brings change in your emotion it brings change in your will yeah zeal to perform and to run is energized praise god and you can never be changed until your mind is changed praise god until your mind is changed there is no change this is very very important and why today's teaching is very very important there is no transformation without the change or the renewing or the transformation of the mind force praise god why do i say that because your whole existence and activities in life revolves around the functions of your mind everything you do look at it you are thinking you are processing of things revolves around the functions of the mind we talk about knowledge we talk about revelation we talk about reasoning we talk about we, we talk about uh, 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 analytical thinking we talk about decisions we talk about choices we talk about judgment we talk about discernment all happen in the mind that's why your mind is very very critical the quality on the or the ability of your mind to process to digest and to digest and function information and function in life determines the quality of your life praise god that's why the Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God is through the transformation by the renewing of the mind that you will know the will of god and knowing the will of god the mind will then propel your will your your ability to do and put it into action praise god now but he said you should not be conformed i told us last week that conformity is dangerous to your existence why is conformity dangerous because conformity is a process whereby an individual or a group of people change their beliefs attitudes actions or perceptions to that which is more closely matching to those uh, uh, popular held or popular held understanding or perception or way of life in other words conformity forces you to lose your identity your distinction 
your peculiarity in the midst of the generality. But God has created you unique to answer and to declare a given purpose and to meet a peculiar need of the earth. So when you allow your uniqueness to melt, to melt into the generality of the entire population, you have lost your identity. Conformity forces you to lose your identity. It forces you to lose even your assignment because all you try to do is to fit into the general direction, into the general mentality and ways of doing things. It says you lose your belief, you lose your activities, you lose your perceptions. But that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. So, conformity forces you to deny even your personal opinion. You lose your own personal voice. You don't have a voice in the arena of conformity. But God has created you with a voice. They asked John the Baptist, who are you? He said, I am the voice in the wilderness. The world is a wilderness. You have a voice. And your voice produces a unique sound distinct to you. Praise God. Everyone emits a given sound. And that sound is a divinely deposited sound in you that identifies you. Praise God. Look at it. On the day of Pentecost in Acts of Apostles chapter 2, it says, when the Spirit of God came upon them through the baptism of the Holy Ghost, every one of them began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. No one was speaking the same language, but they were speaking the same message. Praise God. It was different languages, different tongues, yet different message. Praise God. So though we might be unique, but we all are heading in one direction. So that's why we cannot all run at the same speed. We cannot all run with the same ability because we are gifted differently. Praise God. When we try to align with the crowd, we begin to struggle. But God has created you to run a distinct race. Praise God. So conformity cancels your distinction or your significance in life. But from today, you will recover in the name of Jesus. And the faith which we profess and which is our being is not for conformity. Our faith is in confrontation with conformity. Faith confronts or challenges conformity. Praise God. Because faith is an above <laughs> dimension and is the spirit realm. And the spirit realm commands the physical realm. Conformity is of the physical realm. So it's faith that controls or directs the happenings in the physical realm. So you are a faith man walking in the dimension of the above, the uh, 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 dimension of faith. Praise God. That's why when the normal, normal uh, the convention or understanding is that if he dies, that's the end of the road. But faith says he can rise again. And faith defies that conformity and brings the dead back to life. The normal convention says you are sick. But the faith says by the stripes, by the power of faith, you are healed. And automatically you defy the conventional wisdom and you are made whole. So, the faith you have and the mind God has given to you is the mind that will confront the, conf the normal thing of the earth. That when they are saying it is over with you, 
the mind of God, the faith of God at work in you is saying it's not over yet. Because the same word says, who will decree a thing? It, it comes true if he did not command it. So until your faith agrees with that which is spoken, nothing stands. The finality is what the faith says. Praise God. So with your mind, you paint your future. You might be in a particular place that is not comforting, that is not good looking right now. But through the eyes of your mind that is renewed and transformed, you will paint a picture of liberty or prosperity and consistently walking in agreement with your will through the power of God and you are coming out. Peter was in prison. That was natural. He was confined to prison. That was the conforming with the law of the land, the wickedness of man. But faith intercepted. And when faith intercepted, without any physical impute, the gates and the doors of the prison and chains were broken. And he came out out of it. The same way through the eyes of your mind and through the renewed mind and living faith, whatever that is the chain that has held you in captivity or imprisonment, the chains will be broken. And you will come out of that gates of prison and you step into your liberty. That's what it says in that Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. He said, now the spirit is the Lord. And where the spirit is, where the spirit that renews the mind, where the renewed mind is, there is liberty. Praise God. So that's why he warned us in that Romans chapter 12, verse 2, never be conformed. Never to be conformed is to be limited. You are not created. You are not permitted to be limited. That's why he says, I can do all things, not some things, but not by my strength, but through Christ who does what? Which strengthens me. Praise God. He strengthens my mind that I will go further than the natural body can go. Praise God. The natural mind believes that you must eat a balanced diet. The carbohydrates, the fat, and all the other nutrients together. But the renewed mind says, all I need is only vegetable. And he ate only vegetable. He came out much better than them that performed or ate the so-called conform natural meal or balanced diet. Because the Bible says, when you eat the natural, you will hunger again. But when you eat the supernatural, you will hunger no more. And that's why he said, you can live with the natural just for a while. But when you eat the one that is from above, you will never lack. You will live forever. Praise God. So that's why the mind ought to be renewed. So now we look at it. What then is the mind? Praise God. What is the mind? The mind is the intellect of a man. What is the intellect of a man? Of the mind? The mind is the seat of thoughts and feelings. Your mind is your seat of thoughts. That's where the thinking, the reasoning, takes place. The analysis. It is the intelligent faculty of a man. Praise God. And this intelligent faculty is what determines your what in life. So, you are the product of your mind. What your mind is able to process is what your outward man will reflect. And it's what your spirit man will reflect also. In other words, it means then that if your mind is out of place, you will also be out of place in destiny. Look at it. A madman, no matter how handsome or beautiful he is, becomes unproductive to the society. He cannot participate in government, not even in voting, 
not even in casting his opinion, talk less of ruling or governing. And number, the next one is that even his opinion is not counted because the signature of a madman on a document is not admissible in the court of law because it's, con it's considered as the mindset is broken, is damaged. So it cannot reason properly. So whatever he says or does is counted, is put under question. So a mind that is not renewed, a mind that is not charged, is a deformed mind. It all means in the natural and in the spiritual, it is out of place. It cannot function properly. Praise God. But that will not be a portion. So invariably, it means that your ultimate value in life or what in life is determined by the quality of your mind. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. What your mind thinks or processes is what you produce on the outside. What your mouth says is what your mind produces. Look at it. In the scripture, the mind is being referred either as the soul or the heart, praise God, or the mind itself. So whenever you are talk, coming across the scripture, talking about the soul, it's interchangeably using the mind as the heart, the soul, or the mind. Praise God. So, this is an interesting part, why this teaching is important. The mind is the seat or center of your belief system. The mind is the center of your belief system, not your spirit. Praise God. Thoughts, reasoning, I said before, knowledge, understanding, wisdom, revelation, judgment, decisions, choices, belief, which is conviction and faith, all happens here in the mind. You cannot believe without the mind. Without your mind, there is no believing. That's why it must be renewed. Because belief is the product of conviction. And what is conviction? Conviction means I have received the information released and spoken to me. I have thought it through. I have analyzed them. And with the information and facts available, I see the correctness. Therefore, I come into agreement with what he said. That's the I believe. So no matter how good a sermon or a teaching or a gospel might be, until the mind is able to access it, think it through, and able to accept it, it becomes irrelevant. That's why the parable of the sower said, some fell on the rock and it did not last because the mind did not process it. Then others, he said, they process it. But as soon as they went out, they lost it. And some, by the time they met some pleasures of life or challenges or issues of life, they lost it. But the one on the fruitful soil, the one that were able to accept it and receive it. So it means by virtue of this, the spirit can do nothing in a man without the mind, first of all, opening up to the spirit. Praise God. So it's the mind that gives or opens the door for the spirit to come in. There is no new birth until the mind is touched. Look at it. In the book of Acts of Apostles, I think chapter 2, when uh, in the day of Pentecost, after Peter delivered the summer, they, they, they said they were preached in their heart. Where? In their mind. Their mind convicted them. And the mind, their minds begin to align with the message Peter preached. Then they began to go in that direction. They came into agreement. I think and I believe. I think meaning I have thought it through. In my mind, I have reasoned it true, and we have come into agreement that what Peter said was true. Therefore, they came to Peter. Peter, what shall we do? That was when the door was opened. In the same way, that's how you come to Christ. The world will first of all go through your mind. When the mind is now pricked and regenerated, 
it turns to the Lord, then the Holy Spirit comes in. The power, the enablement for the new life steps in. Praise God. So you find, it, find out the way I can explain the place of mind in your body is when you look at your car, the car, everyone here. If you haven't driven one, you are driving one. If you're not driving, you have been driven in one. You see that you are, the car consists of three major components. The components called the engine components. That's why you see it in the front of the hood. And in that hole, everything there consists majorly of the engine components. That's where you see the engine itself, the radiator, the alternators, and the batteries and everything that helps the engine to run. You see, if you crank the engine and the engine is steaming, then you have the outer one where you are sitting that gives you the covering and the shield, the shade and the shield. That is the physical body. That's the second component, component, the physical body. You are sitting there. No matter how you rev that engine, the revving of your engine can never put your car in motion because there is a third component that is necessary to engage your car in motion, to engage the engine, then put the car in motion. And that second component is the gear system, consisting the gear, the throttle, the pedal, the brake system, and the transmission system. These make the motion system of the car. So until that motion system is engaged, the car will remain in absolute static position. The, your gear system or gear component is your mind. No matter how the spirit man, the engine, is revving and revving and revving, no matter how the outward, outward man, how beautiful is look, looking, if the gear system, the mind, is not engaged, you will remain in a static position. It takes the gear system to put your car in motion. It takes your mind to put your car in motion. Praise God. Together with the steering wheel. And that's what we give it the direction to flow. The engine can rev and rev and rev and rev until the gear system in totality is engaged. There is no motion and there is no direction. That's the power of the mind. That's why you will not, don't toy with your mind because it's loaded. Praise God. In the book of John chapter 1 verse 12, he says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Until the mind opens up to receive the gospel, to receive the living faith, and believe in it, they make a choice and decision to accept. The power to become is not released. The spirit will remain idle until that power is released. Praise God. You see, the word is the mind of God. That was why in the beginning, the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the deep. The Father was there. The Spirit was there. But the Father representing the body, the Spirit <laughs> representing the engine, they were all there. But the gear system was not there. When the gear system was engaged, things began to happen. Until you engage your mind in a renewed way in God. Life will be challenging, but I'm here to tell you, you, there is good news for you, that you are here today, you are already in the right direction. Praise God. That's why he said, as many as received him and believed even in his name, he gave them the power to become the children, the sons of God, to be God-like. Hallelujah. And then Proverbs chapter 4, 23 says, keep your heart. Another translation said, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. So the issues of your existence, the issues of the quality of your life proceed from your mind. So guard it. It's not everybody that is allowed to access it. 
it's not every information that is allowed to come into it. It's not everything that the mind is allowed to see. Because as we go further, you find that the mind has the capacity to receive and store information and then bring it to use when necessary. So whatever you present to it, it takes the foot picture and stores it. At the appointed time, when it's needed, it releases it. So that's why you have to be careful what you allow into your mind. Praise God. There are three types of the mind described in the scripture. <laughs> Can I go deeper? Praise God. Number one type of the mind is the carnal mind. You have also number two as the natural mind. And number three, the spiritual mind. Let's quickly look at the carnal mind. What is a carnal mind? A carnal mind is simply the ordinary mind we are born with. Is the endemic mind, the mind we inherited from Adam, and is a mind that is in rebellion with God. It is mainly carnal because it's, it leans and oppresses in the realm of the flesh. When we mean the realm of the flesh, it oppresses in the realm of the physical. Praise God. It's only controlled and determined, its actions are determined by the material world. That's the flesh. So it relates mostly with what it sees, with beauty, with material things, with money, with houses, with beauty, with outward appearance, with, uh, with riches, with cars, things eyes can see. That's how it qualifies greatness and that's how it assesses life. If it's not there, it means nothing. But you see, a different mind operates in a different system. You see that in operation in Joseph. We are coming. Praise God. So, it is in opposition to the will of God. It has great affinity, great desire for sin. And is opposed to anything relating to God. Romans chapter 8 5 to 8, it says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is in enmity, in other words, in opposition to God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. In this carnal mind, it's impossible to please God. In this carnal mind, it leads to death. That's why the Bible says, there is a way that seems good to man, but it leads only to death. The carnal mind can only lead you to death. If you operate in the things only in the realm of the physical, you will be limited. Not only in this world, but the most dangerous is that with the carnal mind, access into eternity is impossible. That's why he said he cannot please God. If he cannot please God, if he cannot subject itself to the law of God, it is impossible to enter the rest of the Lord. May you Change your carnal mind today in the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Luke chapter 8 verse 14, referring again to the parable of the sower, he says, Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, got out and are choked out with cares, riches, and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. Carnal mind will always choke the spirit man. It will choke the word of God. It will choke the dimension of God in you. So don't give it permission. Praise God. What is the natural mind? The second part is the natural mind. The natural mind may be defined as an individual that oppresses entirely in human wisdom. Is to operate on human wisdom, on human intellect. In other words, on education, on the natural laws. Praise God. They operate with the happenings, the current events. 
Now we are in the age of what we are now, what is happening in the world. All we are being told is what the scientist says. But they are facts. Nobody is saying that everything they are saying is a lie. But the thing is that there is a law that rules the, over the natural laws. And that's the one where, that's where we're heading to. So if the carnal mind cannot get you, the natural mind can also not get you anywhere. Because the world system, the divine law that overrules and oversees, which God gave us the power to rule in Genesis chapter 128, to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, to subdue, and to have dominion, can only be done out with, outside the realm of the carnal and the natural mind. There is a thought mind, praise God. Because the natural mind, due to the facts that is available to it, they have not made any commitment to Jesus Christ. They don't have, neither do they recognize nor celebrate God. They can acknowledge him, but do not recognize nor respect the power therein. Praise God. The natural mind, they might acknowledge God, but they do not respect the power therein. They make mockery of it. They make jest of it. And that's why God said, I have chosen, not the intellectual, but the foolish things of the world to conform the natural mind, to, com to confound the natural mind. In other words, to make ridicule of the natural mind. That's the philosophy or psychology or science will be brought to nothing. That's why doctors will diagnose with cancer. But the spiritual mind will step in and cancer will disappear. Then they say, what happened? He said, it's a miracle. Praise God. I see you encountering your miracle today in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, many sincere and educated people admire the Bible as they see it as literature. Praise God. But Romans makes us understand, Romans chapter 1, 16 and 17, we see the word of God as the power of God. And in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, from glory to glory, from power to power. So as you locate the word, that's where the power lies. Not in your degrees, not in your professions. Praise God. With all the enablement of Egypt in the time of Joseph, they would have finished as a nation. But it took the spiritual mind to deliver them from the hunger and famine that was coming. The astrologers, they are the scientists of their time. The magicians, they were the scientists of their time. They failed. And that's why the goings on of this moment, thank God for science. Thank God for the natural and thank God for the carnal mind. But you know what? Only the spiritual mind will rule the world. And only the spiritual world, mind will give you exit from the calamity that comes from the outside. Praise God. So these people were acknowledge Christ as a wonderful teacher, teacher or an example, but they always miss the real purpose of why he came. It takes the spiritual mind to know Christ and the purpose of his coming. Praise God. And finally, the spiritual mind. What is the spiritual mind? It's a mind that is aligned with the things of the spirit is the mind that is infused into you at redemption or salvation. When you gave your life, they said, what shall we do? He said, repent. That's the, <laughs> praise God, that the dead springs of life will be shed on you. The Holy Spirit, the mind of Christ will be on you. Except a man be born again. By water and by spirit, he cannot enter. When you repent, the new mind of God is imparted in you. Praise God. Is the new mind that is given to you at birth. At birth. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. The carnal mind, the natural mind are thrown away. They are then a new perception, a new view of the world, of the physical world and the spiritual world is released unto you. Praise God. And you know the good news I have for you 
it says in first corinthians chapter 2 verse 7 it says but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery the hidden wisdom which god ordained before the ages for our glory in another place it says we have the mind of christ the mind of christ is the spiritual mind that's the mind you receive at new birth praise god romans chapter 8 6 9 to 11 it says for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace but you are not in the flesh but where in the spirit if indeed the spirit of god dwells in you now if anyone does not have the spirit of christ the mind of christ he is not his it's the spirit of christ is the mind of christ that makes you a part of the kingdom a member of the family of god if you do not have it you are not a member that's why he said you are not his praise god and if christ is in you the mind of christ is in you he said the body is dead in other words the carnal mind and the natural mind is dead then what happens he said he's dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness but if the spirit of him who raised jesus from the dead dwells in you though the natural mind and the carnal mind are dead but there is a new process that goes on the quickening and the renewal it says he will raise you from the dead and give your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you in another translation it said there is a quickening the same way the gear system engages the car in motion the spirit man engages your life quickens you and puts you in motion in the dimension of god praise god praise jesus so now what is the purpose or the functions of the mind praise god i believe you're getting something i'm gonna run quickly on this one the mind had four major functions and this is why it is important that the mind must be renewed because in the renewed process these functions are activated and put into proper use and in the right dimension of God's glory. Praise God. Number one function of the mind is learning. Learning. Learning is what takes up in the mind. And the mind is the principal tool in the act or process of learning. Praise God. And what is learning is the gathering of data, of information. Praise God. The gathering of this information put together is what gives you knowledge. Praise God. It's through knowledge you access knowledge. Or you can also say that knowledge is the product of learning. In everything in the scripture, the Bible makes us understand it takes the knowing to manifest God's glory. So the gathering of information about God leads you to the knowledge of who God is. Praise God. And how do you learn? You learn by studying. You learn by reading. Reading books. That's why he says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, this book of the law, this word of God, if you want to walk in the spirit mind, in the mind of Christ, the word of God, the word of the spirit shall not depart from you. In it, you must study and meditate day in and day and night and begin to observe, take notice, take deep thoughts and consideration and make decisions and choices according to that word. He said, then you will make your word prosperous and you have good success. Praise God. Praise Jesus. So learning is very, very important. Look at it in the book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. It's true learning that Daniel says in verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified in the word of God through Jeremiah. So the 17 years of captivity prophesied by Jeremiah, they were in their own time. Nobody knew. They, they did not remember because they were mocking Jeremiah. But when Daniel went back and began to search the scroll, then he found the prophecy. Then everything fell in line. Then he was able to know the times and seasons. Praise God. Look at what a great man of God 
Dr. T.L. Osborne, T. L. Osborne, say, Osborne said, he says, when you stop learning, you start dying. Your age is not by their, num their number of years or by your gray hairs. Your age is determined by the quality of information and knowledge you have in you. And when you stop studying and learning, you start aging. It's been proven that people that are in active vocations, they stay alive and agile. The moment they retire, they age fast. And that's why we say in the kingdom, we do not retire, but we refire. Praise God. When you stay in the world, when you stay in his presence as a child of God in your kingdom work, you can never retire. You can only refire. Praise God. That's what made Moses at 120 years still strong. Nothing broken, nothing spoiled. I see that happening in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. It's your learning that guarantees your liberty. Praise God. Your learning does what? Guarantees your liberty. St. Paul wrote over 40% of the New Testament. And look at what he says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. He says, bring the cloak that I left with Kapos at Troas when you come. And the books, especially the parchment. St. Paul was a reader. Leaders are readers. In the kingdom of God, to be a leader, God has chosen this ministry to raise kingdom leaders. If you want to be part of it, you have to be ready to read. To read the word of God and also to study the things, the word concerning your life. You see, this is the mistake we make in the Christian faith. That we pray and fast does not make our mind to be frozen. What do I mean by frozen? Everything is attributable to God. God will do, God will do. Therefore, the necessary information and knowledge we must pursue and skills we must pursue, we leave it out. But God has finished his work. Every other work he left to us, when he said, be fruitful and multiply, subdue and have dominion, the assignment is left to us. I keep telling you about the men that changed my life in my early state when I gave my life to Christ Jesus. I encourage you to read that book by Kenneth E. Hagin. It is called The Believer's Authority. I encourage you to read, read the complete one because there is this, um, an abridged version. You can start with the abridged version at least. That will entice you and encourage you to go to the bigger version. And he opened it up to me when I read about the encounter he had where he said he was speaking to Jesus. He had a vision where he was speaking to Jesus. But there was, the devil was like a small monkey in between them. And the monkey was squeaking and making noise. He could not communicate with Jesus. He was speaking. Jesus could not hear him because of the noise of the monkey. Then he was saying, Jesus, rebuke the monkey, rebuke the devil to get out so I will be able to communicate with him. Jesus said, I cannot do that. I've already released all authority to you. You are the one that must speak to it. How can you speak to the devil if you don't know what to be spoken? Praise God. So in this dispensation, as Christians, if the natural people, the natural mind, and the carnal mind are prospering, we have to re-examine ourselves. It's because we have left the duty we're supposed to do, the pursuit of knowledge, excellent in God, we left it to them. Imagine what you would be if you are able to put what God has deposited in you into action. You'll be unstoppable. Everyone that put it to use in the scripture was outstanding. The same power is in you. The same wisdom, the same knowledge is in you. Put it to use. Begin to engage your mind. Read. How many books will you say you have read this year? How can you know if you don't read? You are having a particular profession. Read. And God has made it in a way now. Science has made it easy. You don't even need to read. The thing will read it to you. The books, you get them in Kindle version. They will read it to you. Bible will talk back to you in, as you are driving through, as you are in that phone. Instead of using it as a talking point, use it as a listening point. Praise God. You receive information. You can read books. The books will be reading to you. No longer you reading. Praise God. So there is no excuse. Empower yourself. Hallelujah. Number two, the mind does is understanding. Praise God. Understanding. Understanding is a step forward in the school of knowledge. 
Understanding is what takes you further, deeper, away from knowledge. Praise God. Whereas knowledge gives you the information, understanding unravels the things behind it. Understanding gives interpretation to knowledge. It gives meaning to knowledge. Praise God. Praise God. And it's because when it has given meaning to it, that's how conviction starts. See, this is the process of your believing or you are coming to Christ. And in everything you do in life, you must first of all learn, search. And then after you have learned and searched, then what happens? You will gain knowledge. Having gained knowledge, you gain understanding. It's through the understanding that conviction comes. The audacity to act. The audacity to believe in what you have read. Then to take a step by that which you have read. Praise God. But you see, understanding is the product of meditation. Praise God. If knowledge is the product of knowledge, or of, if, uh, is the pro is knowledge is the product of learning, understanding is the product of meditation. That's why in Joshua, he said again, you must meditate in it. In other words, you must give it a deep thought, analyze it. Ask all the whys and hows and when and what. Then when they are answered, that's why children learn. Because you tell them something, they say, mommy, why? Then you answer again, he say, why? He keeps probing and probing and probing. Then after he has been convinced in what mama or papa says, tomorrow if he goes outside, he say, my mommy said. And no matter what he said, he said, because my mommy said. Praise God. Because my daddy said. That's it. And that's what is happening in the world today. Where in schools, they began to take the word away and begin to pump into the minds of our children all the so-called upside-down knowledge of the world. Pump into their mind. So we need to put in the minds of our children the right knowledge that we help them filter what is coming in from the world. So do not allow the TV, because the TV will never teach them the right way of the Lord. They will teach them that a man is a woman. They will teach them. They will teach them all manner of negativity. But when you bring them in the word of the Lord and begin to align them, they know that. Praise God. They take away the part of the flesh that is foolishness. All it is is covetousness, hate, anger. They look at people on their outward appearance, on who they are, on what they do. That's how they analyze. That's how they place in them. Then there is no honor. There is no respect. But in the words of the Lord, they will see the God in the person. And that's how our world will be sanctified and be made righteous before our God. Praise God. Look at it in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. St. Paul prayed, prayed concerning the Ephesian church that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Look at it, that you may know. And what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sense, praise God. Then Psalm 119, 97 to 100 says, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandment, make me wiser than my enemies. For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For your testimonies, your laws, are my meditations. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. Praise God. I'm going to stop here. We're going to continue next week. But this is the key thing you have to understand. Your mind occupies a major position in the affairs of your life. The quality of your life determines the quality of your mind. You are the product of your mind. As a man thinks, so he is. The mind must be renewed. For you to engage in the dimensions of the transformation God promised us this month, you must allow the renewing and the changing of your mind move from the carnal or the natural mind move from the fleshy things of the world move from your, the academics to the spirit world and you will prosper praise god that's what you will set you on high 
So it means that there must be a cleaning process. You must clean the wardrobe of your mind. You must clean the wardrobe of your mind. And how do I clean the wardrobe of my mind? Because my mind has the ability and capacity to receive, store information and bring it when it's needed. I, I, it's not every voice that I will allow to speak to my mind. It's not everything that I will allow my eyes to see. So it's not every channel, it's not every channel, it's not every website that I must visit. Praise God. It's not everyone that I must associate with. When he starts talking, Lord, give me the ability to discern the voice that is speaking, that I will cut it off. Not everybody must be your friend. Not everybody must seek opinion or advice from. Praise God. Because every information they supply to you, you store it. Tomorrow, if something happens, it goes to the archive, brings it up, and that's how you react. That's why he said, those that have set their minds above, seek the things of heaven from above. Set your mind above so that you begin to seek the things that are above. That's how we are transformed. Learn to engage your mind and put your mind to work. Read, study, engage and improve your vocations. Don't remain stagnant. The world is changing. The way of communication is changing. If you stay out of it, you remain outside, outside it. I was laughing when they started talking about 5Gs and all those things. I said, okay, regardless of what it is, if you stay out of it, you stay out of relating with the world. Without this technology, I will not be able to reach you in different continents of the earth where you are. So engage this technology. That's what made Daniel think that he survived three empires. He survived three empires kings upon kings because he was able to access the knowledge of the time the technology of the time and use it against them access this present knowledge then let the supernatural be infused into it then you begin to rule your world that's what will make you stand out in that place of work that what will make you stand out in that business. That's what will make you stand out in that school. As a child of God, in that school, you will stand out like Daniel. You will stand out like Joseph. Because if Daniel, Joseph could do what they do, how much you that have the mind of Christ? Praise God. You are empowered in a new dimension. I pray this morning that this spirit be released unto you. I pray this morning that you will sit up on where you are. I pray this morning that the spirit of Christ will quicken you up. That you will no longer sit or give excuse or mourn or sorrow. But pick up your bed and walk. Pick up your bed and walk. Praise God. Because he has opened your eyes to see and giving you hands to do miracles. He says, see. That's what he says. See. I have anointed and appointed Bezalel. Who have skills. See the skill God has appointed and released into you. Put it to use. You will do great things. You will shape your destiny. Because it's in you. It's not in any man. It's not in the world system. It's not in the government. It's not in the government. It's not in the politics. It's not in the science. It is in God in whom are all things. And from him all things proceed. He said, if you have this mind, you can do all things. Praise God. You are anointed. I therefore decree this morning for everyone here hearing the voice, my voice this morning, that the voice of the Spirit quicken you this morning. Lord, let there be quickening on this altar for everyone that is bent over by the power of the Holy Ghost. Stand tall. Your head will no longer bow. For anyone that has been sorrowing or mourning or of a heavy heart because of man, because of circumstances, I say, arise and walk. He said to Hagar, while Hagar was crying, he said, the child is about to die and there was no water. He, she sat aside and was crying, watching to see the child died. When God spoke to him through the angel, he said, her eyes were open. She saw water. I pray today your eyes will be opened. You begin to see your 
gateway to your success, your gateway to your next level, your gateway to breakthrough, your gateway to the questions of life you have been carrying or asking. In the name of Jesus Christ, take your eyes away from the natural, from the material world, because they are limited. He that has the eyes of the Lord will see far. May you see far from today. In the name of Jesus Christ, praise God. I give you the opportunity this morning if you haven't given your life to Christ Jesus. This is a wonderful opportunity to surrender your life to Christ Jesus because that's the only way. The natural mind, the carnal mind can only lead to death. But the spirit mind will only lead to life and peace. In Christ, there is peace. There is life. There is prosperity. I have come. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Every other thing that thieves that kill us, that destroy us. Let go and embrace your great future in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So if you are there now, you want to give your life to Christ Jesus, this is an, a great opportunity. Don't postpone it right now, right now. Make that decision that your mind will be renewed, that your mind will be touched and changed. If you have given before and because of the issues of life, you begin to ask questions. Stretch out your hands and say, Lord, reconnect me transform me and change me this hour let me see the beauty you have set ahead of me your glory that is in me in the name of jesus christ you said i am fearfully and wonderfully made let me see the fierceness of you in me let me see the, your wonders in me psalm 71 said you have made me a wonder may god open your eyes to see the wonder of god at work in you in the name of jesus christ i therefore pray this prayer wherever you are say father in the name of jesus I come to you this morning. I am sorry. I repent of my sins. Lord, forgive me. Receive me. And cleanse me with the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Write my name today in the book of your life. Lord, grant unto me your grace. And anoint me with the Holy Ghost anointing. To live the life of righteousness. And purity that you commanded. Open me up to see your glory and your beauty in me and to walk in it and not better to go back again but to remain steady and with you all the days of my life and to see you when I transition to glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you pray that prayer, I come into agreement with you this morning. I say you are lifted. I say be strengthened in the name of Jesus. Receive the gift of life, the Holy Spirit, and the life of Christ Jesus. And begin to walk in the light of his glory. I speak the voice of God into your heart. ears. You will only hear that voice from today onward. Every voice you have heard before now, I truncate and cut off from you in the name of Jesus Christ. And walk in it all the days of your life. In Jesus' mighty name, you have prayed. we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. Grab your communion right now. Remember, grab your communion. Grab your communion. Praise God. Grab your communion. If you get it now, we're going to take this communion quickly from the book of Ephesians chapter 1, 17 through 18. We already read before. I'm going to read it again. It is the communion that opens your eyes of understanding. The communion that will grant you the spirit of revelation and wisdom in the knowledge of God. One. The communion that will open you up to know what are your inheritances in Christ Jesus. That you will no longer be wondering, where is my position? Where am I? You see, there is a popular song they used to sing in those days until Holy Spirit opened my eyes and said, what are you singing? Don't conform with them in that song. It's not of me. The song says, take the whole world and give me Jesus. I was singing it. I danced and was enjoying it. Then the Spirit of God said, what are you dancing to? You are dancing your inheritance. You are dancing your dominion away. I said, what do you mean? He said, yes. If you give the whole world to Satan, then where do you live? The earth is yours. Psalm 115 or 105. He said, the heaven is the Lord. But the earth he has given to the sons of men. I have given you the earth. Say, so wherever the soul of your feet shall touch, I have given you as a possession. So if you have relinquished your territory, the earth is the domain of God. The earth is your garden. If you leave your garden to the devil, where will you multiply? Where will you increase? Where will you subdue and where will you rule? So it's not every song that is a Holy Ghost song. Praise God. So I repented. So whenever I hear it, they start that song and I'm around. I say, stop, change. Can you give me another song? 
So if you've been singing that song, stop it. Change it today. And begin to sing, Satan, I take my whole world from your hand and I rule over you. No longer Satan, take the whole world and give me Jesus. I already have Jesus. Now I'm taking my land and taking my territory and taking my inheritance. There is a position we have in Christ Jesus. And he said number three in that Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 and 18. He said that you may know the power of God that is at work in you. I read it. He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, in the knowledge of God. I pray that prayer this morning that wherever you are as you receive this communion today and with what you have had this morning, that God will open your mind, open you up and grant you the spirit of revelation and wisdom in the knowledge of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Then he says, Ah, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sense. Praise God. That you will know why you are chosen. That you will know why you have accepted Christ. That you will know who Christ in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That the glory will begin to profuse. Will begin to speak in the name of Jesus Christ. So receive this communion this morning. I therefore sanctify this communion in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. I pray as you receive it, that you are receiving the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. As you read, as you eat and drink, the eyes of your understanding be open, that you will begin to gain revelation and wisdom in the knowledge of who God is and your place in him. That you will begin to know that the eyes of your understanding, your spirit man, your mind will be transformed into the mind of Christ. That you will know the purpose of your calling, the purpose of your redemption, and get connected with it. And that you will know the power of God that from today has been unleashed unto you. He said the anointing for salvation, the anointing for ministry, the anointing for dominion, from today embrace it and operate in it. You become unstoppable. Whatever that has stopped you from today, by this anointing, by this communion, the blood and revelation you have gained this morning, you are set loose. Take over your land. Rule over your world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now take it, receive it, break it. Hallelujah. Mm. Then pray that prayer. In the next one minute. Let your eyes of understanding be open that you may know the hope of your calling and the position and the inheritance you have in Christ Jesus. That you will gain the spirit of revelation and wisdom. That you will know the power of God that is at work in you. That from this moment onwards, you will no longer be a slave, not to sin, not to the devil, not to the issues of life, but you will begin to rule over your world. In the name of Jesus Christ, I therefore decree and declare as you have received this morning, the word enlighten you, the word transform you, and the word change you and bring you to a higher dimension of glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, I therefore speak transformation into your destiny, to your career, to your business, to your finances, to the health of your body, to your marriage, to your relationships, to, 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 to your vocations, every area of your life, to your emotions, to your spirit man. I say life from today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So it is in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? Are you blessed this morning? Keep at it and know that you are a new man in Christ Jesus. You have more than you need to prosper. And nothing can make you stop it. Nothing can stop you. Nobody have access to your mind except the one you gave access to. So do not give access, not to no devil. Praise God. Not to any man, not to any issue, not to any circumstance. Put them under your feet and you rule over them in the name of Jesus Christ. Now package your offering, your seed, your thanksgiving, your tithe unto the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. One of the greatest ways to unlock the mysteries of heaven is through giving. Don't be just a receiver. May God open your heart to know the secret of prosperity in giving. He said, give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Shall men give unto you. Ah, praise God. 
Praise that your offering, give that your seed before the King of Kings. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring these our tithes and offering unto you. As he lifts our hand, he lifts with joy and gratitude. And as he lifts, Lord, we position ourselves to receive the Isaac hundredfold blessing. Let it flow from your throne room in every area. We are sowing money. We are sowing material things. May we reap, he reap heavenly things, spiritual things in every area. In the seven dimensions of transformation, spirit realm. Lord, vocation, mental, emotion, health, finances, relationships, in the name of Jesus Christ, that we will begin to rule over our world and bring glory to your heavenly name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. our season we are not going down we are going up we are not standing still we are marching forward in the name of jesus Christ. that's the mind mentality that's what i'm talking about praise god hallelujah i therefore decree and declare over you may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of his holy spirit be with you now and forevermore Amen. I said, let's, let's share it together. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of our God forever and ever. Amen. As you enter into this week, the glory of the Lord shall go with you. The favor of God will go ahead of you. Wherever you step in, the favor of God will speak on your behalf. Doors will open unto you. And I decree the blood you have drunk and the body you have eaten this morning will be a shield for you from evil, from terror, from diseases, from afflictions in the name of Jesus Christ. They will never come near you in the name of Jesus Christ. I commit you into the angelic hands from today in the name of Jesus Christ. They will bear you at the safety of their hands. You will not see accidents. You will not see death. You will not see corruption. You will not see sorrow. You will not see pain in the name of Jesus Christ. And you are exempted from every wrong association and wrong decisions and choices in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I therefore decree the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance over you and give you peace. Have a very glorious week and the peace of the Lord shalom be with you in Jesus' name. Amen. From Park, the Powerhouse Assembly, we say have a glorious week and see you on Tuesday. Mm -hmm.